My name's Luke, and today we're going to talk to you about Revisto appearance templates. These can be really powerful in helping you to coordinate and visualize your design. So the first question is, why do we need appearance templates as coordinators? Well, when we receive models and federate or merge the models together, we can receive them in a way that pretty much is uh, not identifying where those models are coming from. It's not immediately obvious which discipline has created these models, uh, what the different services or systems are that are involved. And so we need to try and create a filter for this view that helps us to focus in on various types of coordination. And depending your specific role in the project, you will focus in on or be interested in different things on the project, different parts of this federated model. So a few uh, first steps. The first thing we've done here is exported a model to Revisto from Navisworks. So we've federated the models in Navisworks and exported them all at once into Revisto here. We've also set up a home view. So in our viewpoint list here, we've created a home view. And this is the default view that most people will arrive at. The first clue that we have appearance templates now is this lock icon here, which we'll explain in a moment. When we are beginning to set up appearance templates, we're going to be very interested in object properties. So let's open up our object properties. We can double click an object, or we can simply select an object and click on the properties panel here. As we browse through this list, we'll become interested in certain properties more than others. For example, if I search for file here, we can see that source file is a property. And at different levels of the hierarchy, different properties are exposed. Let's open the object tree to see this. Notice as we browse the object tree here, we start to expose things that are interesting to us for filtering and searching for the models. One of the first things that I'm interested in is trying to break these models down into the discipline that provided them. One of the simplest ways of doing this would be by simply selecting a model here, and we've now selected the entire electrical model, for example. However, it would be more intelligent for us to use some search sets to do this. Let's try out two different techniques. The first one will be using the source file name. So what we're going to do is right click here and create a new search. The only piece of the source file name that is truly interesting here is the HC part, which indicates that this model is coming from the hydraulic consultant. So we're going to use a contains filter HC on the source file name and click find all. Now, initially we received this warning saying it can't find anything. That's because we have elements only ticked. So we'll untick that and hit find all now. And now it's selected the two models that have been provided by the hydraulic consultant. This is now a useful search set for us. So let's save this as a new set and call it hydraulic. And we'll create a folder for these search sets called disciplines, and we will make those search sets visible to all team members. I'm now going to drag the hydraulic search set into the disciplines folder. What I now need to do is work my way through and make sure that each discipline is represented in the disciplines folder as a search set. Let's do just one other example together. In this example here, when I select this model, the source file property has come through as the federated file name. This is how Navisworks has read that information. However, we can use a combination of properties to achieve the result we want. Here we have item name and item type as link. Let's create a new search by right-clicking, create new search. And this time around, we're gonna change the item name to contains with the dash ST on it find all. Again, we should untick elements only. And now we've found the two structural models using this combination of properties. Let's save that as a new set. 
I'm now going to quickly go through and create the remaining discipline search sets. You can see here we've now created a search set for each discipline here. Clicking the arrows will select that discipline. We're now going to build our appearance template on top of these search sets. Let's close the Find Objects panel and zoom a little closer into our model where we will immediately see the results of our changes here. Let's select the Structural Design model and right click and color and set it to gray. Okay. If we want to see immediately the effects that, or the rules that are being used on this view to create this particular uh, visual appearance, we can open the paint bucket and we see all of the visual overrides that are occurring here. Some of these were inherited from the home view and we've now begun to create these additional filters here. Let's create or select the structural steel model now and override its color to a bright orange, the mechanical model and override to purple, hydraulic to a light blue, fire to red and electrical to green. Now the colors that we use there were quite arbitrary. Depending on the arrangements in your own country, there may be a standard for each discipline that you would prefer to use. So we've now created a fairly useful set of visual settings that override each discipline to a primary color. It would be a great idea to save this to come back to it later. And that's where appearance templates come in. So I'm going to click the paint bucket and save as a new appearance template, discipline colors and hit enter. Now, where did my appearance template go? It's here in this dialog. So we can see that we have an appearance template called discipline colors. Now, how do we use the appearance template? Well, it could be that I am navigating through my model, visually looking at something, and I want to load up the colors from my appearance template. So the first way that we can use that template is simply click the arrow to the right of the template. That applies all of the visual settings immediately to the view in the location where we're standing. By clicking the delete button here or clear all, all the visual overrides are immediately removed in one click. Now what if I want to combine my appearance templates with re reviewing things through my viewpoints? Let's open the viewpoint list and we'll temporarily place it here on the right. Now there's some preloaded viewpoints in here. As we click between these, there may be various locations in the model that it will take us. But what I want to do is I want to load up my appearance template and still be able to navigate between viewpoints. So I'm going to click the arrow to activate the template and then I'm going to click the lock icon to lock appearance. Now when I navigate through viewpoints, my locked appearance remains. This is extremely powerful for coordinators. Now we can set up one list of viewpoints that are essentially locations in the model and sectioning like this, but all of our visibility and colorization comes directly from this appearance template as a global override. It may be that we want to do some additional kind of refinement to our appearance template. For example, 
we look at the model here, we'll notice that some objects are flexible duct. If we open the object properties, we could create a new search related to the category flex ducts. Create new search. And I'm going to immediately save that as a new search set. I'm going to create a new folder for object categories and place my flex ducts search within it. I'll share that folder so the rest of the team can see. So now I'm going to select the flex ducts, keeping in mind that my appearance template is pretty much still active as it was before. So let's select all the flex ducts, right click and set transparency. This has added a nice transparent effect to those items. We could go one step further and do something similar for duct insulation. So now we've taken our original appearance template and we've done a couple of extra things. How do I save those changes to the appearance template? If I open the appearance profiler and click the arrow, notice here that I have the option to update discipline colors, which was the name of my appearance template. I'm now going to click that and the appearance template itself has now been updated. The next question is, what if we want to use this appearance profile in coordination, like during a meeting or reviewing issues or raising issues in the issue tracker? So let's click on the issue tracker first. What we see here are a list of clashes that have been synchronized from Navisworks. Generally, when clicking between clash issues, Revisto will display the model based on the overrides at the bottom of the screen. So at the bottom of the screen, we have various ways to change transparency, isolation, and so on of the actual clashes. But what if we wanna apply our discipline colors to this arrangement? Well, really, all we need to do is go up to the top left here, choose appearance template, select the appearance template, and the appearance template is now locked on to our issue tracker. So as we click through issues here now, these colors remain. We can turn on isolation or isolate in transparency like so. but the colors that we've applied are still present. This button here stops the colors from being overridden to the red and green for clashing objects and switches to regular mode, which in this case will be using the appearance template colors. So that's the primary workflow with appearance templates. We set up some search sets, we work on colorizing, isolating, hiding objects, save that into an appearance template, and then we can lock the appearance template in the viewpoints area and in the issue tracker to be able to get a consistent view of our model. Now consider some other techniques that you may use. For example, we may wanna work on only two disciplines at once. So let's firstly apply the discipline colors and then let's select using our search sets, the mechanical and hydraulic or plumbing disciplines, right click and isolate. So here we have the colorized models, but only those two models showing. Let's save this as another appearance template. This time it's mech versus plumbing or hydraulic. So now we can freely switch between all disciplines showing and two disciplines isolated. And again, we could use this to help us quickly identify clashes and problems with the models. When we identify a clash, the workflow is as per usual in Revisto. We'll use the relevant stamp to raise the issue to the specific discipline. Let's look at one final way that we could 
use appearance templates. This time, we're not going to work so much on the discipline level, but rather the actual model element level. What do I mean by that? Well, what if we wanted to focus in on only the hydraulic model and colorize additionally by system? First, let's remove all visual overrides and then isolate the hydraulic model. We can see here that no colors are applied. Now we're going to start interrogating the object properties. And we're going to look for the system information. The system abbreviation here will be very useful. This indicates that it's stormwater or rainwater. Let's right click and create a new search. Save this as a new set called stormwater. We should place this in a new folder called system type. What we could do is we could begin applying the colors to the systems to see how much work we have to do to completely colorize this particular model. So let's select all the stormwater, right click and color it like so. Now, let's begin selecting another object type. CW indicates this is cold water supply. What we could do is add this to our favorites to make it easier to get to. We'll now save this as a search set and colorize it as well. RW is a type of reticulated hot water. We'll save this as a new set. See how we're slowly building up a colorized system level model. SD is sanitary drainage. With these few clicks, we've colorized this entire hydraulic or plumbing model by system. Now we want to save this as an appearance template. Notice how all of the search set names are listed and the colors are listed. We can override these if we want to or change colors quite easily. Let's save as a new appearance template, color by system. Now, as we begin browsing our model and reviewing it, we have a few options here to use our appearance templates. We can use the discipline colors, mechanical versus plumbing only, or we can color the hydraulic model by system. Combined with the ability to lock appearance templates in the viewpoint list and in the issue tracker, appearance templates are really going to make it easier for you to coordinate your building more successfully.